Hello and welcome. You're watching the SABC News Channel, independent and impartial. I'm Peter Ndoro and you're watching The Globe on this Friday night where we usually give you a Friday night interview. And tonight we have somebody from Somaliland. Minister Shira, thank you very much indeed for joining us on the program. Welcome to South Africa. You're the Minister of Finance in Somaliland. What has brought you to South Africa? Well, we have been invited by the progressive forces of South Africa, led by the Communist Party for a solidarity conference uh, to look at the situation of Somaliland and to support the cause of Somaliland. And that's what's happened in the past two days. And the meeting ended very well. Uh, it uh, ended with a communique which said that, you know, the Somaliland, uh, Somaliland needs to be supported and needs to be engaged uh, politically and economically as well. All right, so you delivered uh, a speech at the conference. In the main, what was your message to those that were there? Well, the main message was to really put things into context. A lot of people do not know Somaliland or do not know Somaliland very well. So I went through the history of Somaliland. Somaliland, in fact, is a country with a history of over a century as a separate state. Over 70 years under the British rule and for the last 30 years on its own from 1991 to today, 2020. And uh, in 1960, when we got our independence from the British, the 26th of June, we were an independent state called the state of Somaliland. We had a parliament and a prime minister. And at that time, there was a lot of anti-colonial sentiment and a very strong nationalist sentiment as well. Our people wanted to bring together all the Somali inhabited territories. As you may be aware of in, in, 19, in 1884, the Europeans divided the Somali inhabited territories into five, the French Somaliland and the British Protectorate and Italian Somaliland and Nogaden, which is part of Ethiopia, and the NFD, the North District Frontier of Kenya. So the purpose was to bring all the five together and in that in the emotion of the moment, we decided to unite with Somalia, which were former Italian colony. And we agreed to draft our parliament to draft an act of union and their parliament to draft an act of union and then to negotiate a common act of union. That did not happen in fact. The act of union drafted by our parliament was ignored and they you know, forced it upon us the act of union which the majority, you know, they had the majority of the parliament, the majority of the parliament voted for. But a year later, when the constitution was put to, to a referendum, our people rejected the referendum. And in that same year, a group of young officers from Somaliland attempted a coup to restore the sovereignty of Somaliland, but that failed. And then for the next 30 years, we had a very bumpy road with Somalia. We had particularly suffered in the hands of the regimes that ruled Somalia, that ruled Somalia from 1981 to 1991, when finally the government in Mogadishu collapsed and, the, and, 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 and we have decided in a national conference in Burao to leave the union because it did not work for us, it did not work for them. And since that time we have been on our own. We started a process of reconciliation among ourselves and established a government and a charter. And later in 2001, we uh, voted on a referendum on a new constitution, which 97% of the people voted for. Since then, we established a truly democratic system whereby we had six elections, three presidential elections, you know, two councillor elections and one parliamentary election. And we're preparing ourselves for the 70th election coming this May. 
So we have been really on a democratic path and have been able to maintain security and stability in a very unstable region of Africa. All right, so the modern um, Republic of uh, Somaliland, 1991 is when you declared your independence. That's almost 30 years ago. Why is yes. it then your country hasn't been given the sovereign status that it so desires? Well, in fact, Somaliland is recognized de facto in general, not de jure, not yet the full recognition. And we deal and have relations with many states around the world, uh, a state-to-state -state relationship. But coming back to your question as to why Somaliland was not recognized, the common excuse that's given by people outside Africa is that this is an African matter. And in fact, it has been taken to the AU and in 2005, the AU sent a mission to Somaliland, a fact-finding mission. And the mission, when it returned, it, 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 it produced a report which was very favorable and which said, the Somaliland case is a unique case and has nothing to do with opening a Pandora box in Africa, if recognized. And we're still waiting for the AU to act upon that report. Um, but the AU, some of the members of the AU themselves, when you raise the matter with them, say, well, that's a matter between Somaliland and Somalia. Well, as far as we are concerned, it's not just a matter between Somalia and Somalia, but it's an African matter, because here you have a country and people who are denied their basic rights, you know, simply because they are not recognized, or simply because Somalia does not want us to be recognized, which we think is totally unfair. So in the meeting we had the past couple of days, we discussed this issue, and I think it has been acknowledged and recognized that, you know, we should not suffer simply because Somalia, you know, doesn't want us to be recognized. And I think the people should make a decision on the facts on the ground, and the fact is that, you know, we have a legal case and a moral case and a humanitarian case to be recognized, and we believe if recognized it, that will benefit the region, including Somalia itself. So how have you been able to function um, since 1991 with Mogadishu uh, on the one hand and these borders that you've clearly defined? Is there movement between Somalia and Somaliland if you, as you've recognized it? Is there a border that uh, one has to cross and get a passport stamp? Yes, well, Somaliland has had defined boundaries. Uh, the British had a protocol with the Italians, with, with the Italians, which defined the boundary between Somaliland and Somalia. And of course, you have to cross a boundary. But how did we survive? I think we survived on our own by relying on our own resources. Unlike Mogadishu, we don't have foreign troops that secure, you know, that that that. Uh, ensure security in our country and we do not depend on donors and others to pay our government officers and civil servants and army our people pay taxes and we use these taxes to build the schools and clinics and pay the salaries of the doctors and the nurses and the teachers and the police officers and all the civil servants you know and I think that's one of the reasons why we have been stable, because it has been, we have been on our own, rather than relying on others, you know, who are sometimes, you know, uh, have a, some sort of a proxy war, you know, in, in, in the territory in which they are. All right, let's talk a little bit again about uh, sovereignty. You've got clearly defined borders, as you say, but there is a disputed area of Sanag, uh, to the northeast of uh, Somalia and uh, to the east of Somaliland. How is this um, going to be uh, resolved? Because that's part of the equation as well, isn't it? Well, the African Union in its conference in Cairo in 1964 said that all states must respect the colonial boundaries. Not that because they were right, 
but because that can be a solution to all the disputes that may arise in contesting boundaries. So we have a defined boundary, not by us, you know, but by the colonial era and is accepted and, you know, acknowledged by the AU. Of course, you know, there are communities in that part of the Somali language you mentioned, and elders from these communities were part of the conference in which we decided to leave the union with Somalia. That may be the case, but um, the, the Puntland uh, d still continues to dispute and won't let go of the portion that uh, you say belongs to Somaliland. But disputing doesn't give you the right, <laughs> you know, to, to a territory which is not yours. I'm quite sure we have the same situation in many African countries, people disputing the borders. But the borders are well defined internationally, so there's no dispute on that. So the African Union, is it just taking time or do you think that there genuinely will be a movement towards uh, full recognition and then perhaps taking the next step to the uh, United Nations? Well, we're confident that the AU will do the right thing. And the right thing is to recognize the right of the people of Somalia to be a sovereign state. And once, you know, the AU recognizes us, then, you know, the UN you know, will, you know, will, will, be, will not be difficult. You know, but uh, of course, the AU and the UN as organizations do not recognize states. It's the states, the member states that recognize. But I'm quite sure with the consent of the AU, uh, you know, we, will have, we will be recognized by the members of the AU. So what travel documents do citizens use at the moment now to travel on? Well, we use Somaliland passport. Of course, sometimes we use European passports or American passports, but we have our own passport. We have a, you know, a service passport, a diplomatic passport, and an ordinary passport, and our people travel on these passports. And there are many countries which accept our passports. Uh, South Africa was one of the countries that, in fact, accepted our passport in the past. Uh, but recently, you know, that has changed, and we think that's not really fair. And that's one of the things we're going to discuss with the authorities here. Let's talk a little bit about your economy, your finance minister there. What is the engine of uh, Somaliland? What keeps the country going? Well, as I said, I think self-reliance is a big factor. But as far as the economy is concerned, our economy is basically an agrarian economy. The livestock sector accounts for up to 28% of the GDP. That's followed by the service sector, which accounts for uh, 22 percent. Agriculture is about 7 percent, and construction and property about another 7 percent. Uh, the diaspora also, I think, takes, you know, uh, it's a big factor in rebuilding and investing in the country, which drives really development in the country. Uh, but our business people are really also very, very shrewd. And, uh, and, and quite brave. And, uh, you know, we started in 1991 with nothing, absolutely nothing. And the capital of Somalia and Hargeisa was destroyed. It was, you know, it was a rubble, more or less. But today it's a thriving metropolitan city with over one million population. And all that reconstruction has been done by our people and by our government. How do you manage to have and enjoy uh, so much growth uh, peace and stability in a very unstable region. And, uh, you know, literally next door, we look at Somalia and uh, half the time there are explosions, there is fighting, there is war. How has Somaliland been able to insulate itself from what's happening uh, very close to the, your country? I think the, the pain we experienced, you know, while we were with Somalia, has taught us, has brought us together. And, um, uh, you know, it's really a government of the people by consent, in a way. And we have a system, you know, whereby, you know, we make uh, a decision, whenever we want to make a decision in which, you know, people 
whether they're in parliament or whether the elders are, are consulted. So it's really by, by, concession, by consensus and consent and also vigilance and the history that we had, that we went through, that's helping us uh, unite uh, as a nation, but at the same time ensure security and, uh, you know, save us you know, from the uh, problems of uh, piracy and from the problems of extremism and explosions that is so common in Somalia. So then why is it that Mogadishu won't let go? Well, that's the question. I think that's the question which we would like to put to Somalia. As a matter of fact, starting from 2012, we decided to have a dialogue uh, with Somalia, initially sponsored by the UK government. And the aim was to have a peaceful and amicable divorce, you know. And since then, we had up to nine meetings sponsored by different governments, uh, the British, the UAE, Djibouti, Turkey, and I think the last time also the Americans were involved. Uh, but in all these meetings, really nothing substantive came out of it. We had few agreements on few issues, but they went back on all the, on all the agreements. They did not honor any of the commitments and the agreements they made in these meetings. So, uh, you know, we, we really feel, you know, they have been deliberately, you know, dragging their feet, perhaps thinking that one day Somalia land will come around and join Somalia. But I tell you, that's not going to happen. In the meantime, I think you've already alluded to it. You're reaching out to Southern Africa, South Africa in particular, to uh, fully normalize relations between the two countries, particularly when it comes to travel and recognition. How's that going? I think, you know, that's going well. I think there is a lot of sympathy. And by the way, we engaged with, uh, with South Africa uh, from 2000 to 2010. I think there has been just a lot in between. Uh, I think the authorities are reasonably aware of the situation in Somalia, but we would like to engage them actively. And that's because South Africa now holds the chairmanship of the AU, but also and South Africa, you know, as the biggest economy in Africa, has responsibilities uh, as a result of that position to ensure that all Africans, you know, uh, uh, you know, have uh, enjoyed their due rights. And we believe that there's a case to answer here in Somalia. Let's talk a little bit about um, your outward uh, relationships uh, with other parts of the world. Africa is one uh, aspect, and I think we've uh, uh, chatted a bit about that. What about other regions like Europe, uh, North America? How much engagement have you had uh, with other parts of the world? Yes. Well, in fact, we have offices and representatives in 20 countries around the world, including Africa and Asia and Europe and North America, in the US and Canada as well. You know, we have uh, a large diaspora in all these countries and others, and we relate through them and directly as well. But at the same time, there are countries with with consular offices in Somaliland, and that includes the neighbors, the Ethiopia, Djibouti, uh, we have uh, Turkey, uh, we, have, um, we have the UK itself. And uh, so we do have, we have Taiwan recently, you know. We, so there are countries that have representatives in Somaliland, I think as a, as a, as a sign and symbol uh, of respect. Uh, for the existence and the sovereignty of Somalia. Do you think that you might be a victim of your own success in that uh, because you're peaceful, you're stable, and you're literally getting on with it, that there's no sense of urgency required by the international community to give you your sovereignty? I think that may be a factor, to be honest, you know. <laughs> we are not a naughty boy or a naughty child. and. If you are not a naughty, people don't notice you. You know, that, that's, that's a fact. And sometimes we have the sense that perhaps we're being punished for being successful and Somalia is being rewarded for failing, which is really a paradox. What would full recognition do for Somaliland and its people? 
how would the country benefit from full status? Uh, because you're already succeeding. Yes, as yes. Life. Well, I think there are many advantages to being recognized fully. First, at the present time, we cannot access finance, credit from financial institutions like the World Bank or the African Development Bank because we are not a member. Uh, it's also more difficult to attract investment uh, in big way if you are not recognized. That's another problem. We don't get any support or, 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 or supplementary support in our budget. We rely on our taxes entirely. And uh, traveling, you know, as we have said earlier, is a problem as well, because it's very difficult for our students to go abroad and study, or for our people who seek you know, health care to go out of the country, or our traders to go out and do business in other countries. So there are a number of restrictions imposed by lack of recognition, and we think these are rights you know, uh, you know, rights are denied. Perhaps in conclusion, um, what would your message be to the people of South Africa and the continent uh, 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 from Somaliland at this time? Well, the, really the message is here is a country called Somaliland, which is an African country which denied its right to be recognized as a state. And as a result, its people suffer and are denied rights because of, the, because of lack of recognition. And we think it is to the benefit of the African continent and the region as well, including Somalia, for Somaliland to be recognized. All right, that was uh, Somalia's uh, Minister of Finance and Development, Dr. Saad Ali Shire. I spoke to him in Johannesburg. He was attending the Solidarity uh, Conference that was organized by the Somali Trade Office, uh, lobbied, uh, lobbying South Africa's recognition of the Republic of Somaliland. And uh, uh, this was attended by a number of uh, local political parties and uh, people with uh, various business interests. Uh, the two-day meeting was attended by a number of parties, including the South African Communist Party, as well as the ANC. And uh, yeah, they're fighting for uh, recognition as their status. They declared their independence from Somalia in 1991. And for 30 years now, still uh, not getting <sighs> proper recognition, although they do enjoy, as you heard in that interview, some kind of uh, diplomatic uh, interaction with various countries, whether it's uh, representative offices or some even have consular offices uh, with Somaliland.